Recorded Books and RB Digital present Epic Fails, Not-So-Great Presidents, Commanders-in-Chief, by Eric Slater and Ben Thompson, narrated by L.J. Ganser. A Quote from Abraham Lincoln My great concern is not whether you have failed, but whether you are content with your failure. Introduction Who is the President, anyway? Since the first president took office in 1789, 44 men have served as the highest-ranking politician in the United States. Each has wielded executive power over one of the foremost countries in the world, serving not only as political leader, but also as commander-in-chief of all American military forces. Each of these men, from George Washington to Donald Trump, has a unique story, unique accomplishments, and unique, well, failures. Oh, and since we're talking about failures, even though Trump is known officially as the 45th president of the United States, he's actually the 44th guy to hold the title, because one president, Grover Cleveland, actually had two non-consecutive terms, and he messed up the count for everyone. Unlike the Roman emperors or the Russian czars of long ago, the President of the United States does not wield unlimited power to just rule America with an iron fist. The President is, in fact, a democratically elected politician, and no matter how much he might want to try to steamroll his opposition, the President is bound to the Constitution and held accountable by a system of checks and balances that keep him from getting out of control. So, to keep any one branch of government from dominating the country— the federal government is split among three branches, the judicial, Supreme Court, the legislative, Congress, and the executive, President. Another big difference between the old medieval kings and the President of the United States of America is that the President is chosen by the people for the people, just like American Idol contestants. Maybe voting for guys as if they're on Dancing with the Stars isn't the best idea ever, but it beats the way they used to do it, when power just passed from the king to his son until someone got mad, killed the king, and crowned a new one. No, in America there's a presidential election every four years where American citizens from all 50 states vote for a new president and then immediately start complaining about him. There are only three requirements to run for the presidency. You must be a natural-born citizen— meaning born in the United States, you need to have lived in the United States for at least 14 years, and you need to be at least 35 years old. So, any American meeting these requirements can technically become president. But it takes a special kind of person to be the president. And as you'll read in this book, just because someone can be president and was elected to be president doesn't mean he should be president— or that he did a particularly great job. Chapter 1. First Presidents A quote from George Washington. We should not look back unless it is to derive useful lessons from past errors and for the purpose of profiting by dearly bought experience. The year was 1776 and the bloody fighting of the American Revolution was in full swing. American colonists had openly challenged the authority of King George III of England, and the first shots of the conflict rang out over Boston Harbor and echoed across the Atlantic. While many brave and poorly equipped American patriots stood their ground against the might of the British Empire, the members of the Second Continental Congress were frantically scrambling to try to figure out what the heck to do next. You see, what had started as a slightly rowdy anti-tax demonstration of protesters cosplaying as Native Americans, the Boston Tea Party, now escalated into a shooting match between the largest military the world had ever seen and a ragtag group of untrained militiamen that was low on gunpowder. If this revolution was going to be a real war for independence, America was going to need a powerful, talented, and effective leader to take command and lead the country to freedom. On July 4, 1776, members from all 13 colonies had finally come to an agreement. 
Sample complete. Ready to continue?